there was just one thing you needed to focus on to meet and date more attractive women. It's something that Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, and Martin Luther King all have in common, and it's basically the 80-20 of attraction, which means it's the one thing to focus on that will give you the most bang for your buck. Basically the closest thing to a magic pill, and I call it the King Complex. Named after, of course, Martin Luther King. Because you probably don't want to go up to a beautiful woman like a social weird robot giving her some backhanded you know, insult about her nails or memorize ridiculous pickup lines or wear outlandish peacocking outfits and so many guys run around in circles doing ridiculous things to attract women. And believe me, I've been there too. Until they actually come to us and we set them straight and teach them how to embody this king complex that I'm about to share with you to attract, date, and even meet the woman of their dreams. My name's Matt Artiston from The Attractive Man, coming at you from Havana, Cuba, which feels like the 1950s, and this is the one thing that you need to focus on to spark attraction and get women to chase you. We spent two hours looking for Wi-Fi, going to 10 different hotels, because apparently the only place you can buy these government-issued Wi-Fi cards are at big hotels, but none of them seem to have them today. So setting up dates seems to be near impossible since there's no SIM cards, there's no way to text, and then there's no Wi-Fi to use Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp. So the only option apparently is gonna be go on InstaDate. So keep that in mind if you come here. Do you have... Instagram yes, or yes, what's up? Instagram. Okay, but I don't have now because I didn't vow. Do you know where to buy the internet? No. You don't know where to buy? I don't have. I don't. I don't it's not yeah. important for me. <laughs> right yeah, now. it's important for me because I gotta work, but no. I don't know where to buy it. I've, I've been no. spending two hours going all these hotels and nobody knows where. Back in 2010, a story known as the Chilean mining accident blew up news stations across the globe. And after the aftermath was broadcast to the entire world, I was reminded of a very powerful lesson about becoming the kind of man that women just can't ignore. So get this, on August 5th, 2010, a group of Chilean miners experienced their worst nightmare. The cave collapsed without warning and they were trapped 700 meters underground. That's the same length as six football fields straight down. And the workers had 700,000 tons of rock standing between them and the entrance. And to that, their supplies and their oxygen were running out quickly. Everyone was pretty much certain that all those men would not make it out alive. But the 33 trapped miners had one glimmer of hope down there. His name was Luis Urzua. Described as a born leader, the 54-year-old was the shift commander at the time of the collapse. And using all of his wits, resourcefulness, and leadership, Luis was able to secure all the men in a secure refuge beneath all the debris. This was the first obstacle that we had. This is the nivel he then organized their resources like food, water, and medical supplies. What was only meant to be just a short 48 hour supply was stretched out to two full weeks. They drank tiny sips of milk and they took really small bites of tuna. And under his direction, his men also used a bulldozer to open a natural water deposit for drinking. But he did even more than that. He took three men with him to scout the area for tunnels. And from there, he was able to make a detailed map of the area. This helped him coordinate with the rescue efforts above ground. And when the rescuers finally arrived, Luis volunteered to be the last man to be hoisted in the rescue pots. His leadership kept all the men positive, organized, and alive. I love this story, not only for the inspiration, but for the lessons that it gives us, because Luis Urzua demonstrated status. By the way, man, if you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button right now, and also hit that bell notification icon so we can notify you of upcoming videos. I got a lot of cool videos from Cuba and other parts of the world to help you with women and dating and all parts of your life, so I don't want you to miss a thing. The 
The Journal of Psychology of Sexuality found that women prefer men with status. This is based on evolutionary psychology where the high status man can provide a better future for her and her offspring. And of course, one of the biggest indicators of status is leadership because the leader of a group of primates tends to have the highest status. So, how do you be a leader? And what if you have no one to lead? Time to get a haircut in Cuba. Hopefully he doesn't bust me. Pretty good. Didn't know he was gonna do my eyebrows, and I was gonna get a shave. It's a good deal, seven pesos, which is, I think, eight dollars. Mr. Ledin here knows all about being a leader and being high status. So here are nine ways to be a leader that women will absolutely love, even if you have no friends and no social status whatsoever. And the last of the nine are all about what to do specifically when you're with a beautiful woman. So make sure to watch until the end because if you don't do what I'm going to tell you, then I can almost guarantee that she will lose interest and attraction in you. First, you gotta be a leader of self. That means sacrificing short-term gain or pleasure for long-term gain or rewards. For example, working out. <laughs> for me, it sucks. I don't really enjoy it. And oftentimes I don't wanna go to the gym, but I go anyway because I know the health benefits and I know it's gonna make me look and feel better Short term and long term, really. And of course, another example is approaching beautiful women. For most people, at least in the beginning, it doesn't feel great. There's nervousness, anxiety, fear of rejection, but we know nothing bad can happen and we know it's gonna give us long term rewards. A girlfriend or even a date, physical intimacy, etc. So when you develop the habit of stepping out of your comfort zone, all the time, stepping into tension, just like working out. There's a lot of tension, physical tension, it's painful. Approaching women, it's, there's no physical tension or pain. Well, I guess a little bit in your stomach or in your body. It's more of emotional fear. But when you get in the habit of just doing that regularly, not only does it build character, strength, and confidence, but you develop the habit of being a leader and you become the type of person who goes for what he wants in life. So you need to get used to getting out of your comfort zone, doing things that scare you, that you know also won't kill you, that will give you some sort of gain. Like... Jen just bought a bag, show us the bag. $20. Says Jen and Matt, it's kind of cute. You have to have a purpose, something that you are aiming for, something that's potentially bigger than yourself or like a life mission, an aim in life, a direction. Most people don't even have that. And that puts you on a path and gives you direction so you know where you're heading. And every single day you're doing small things to get you there. And as you keep progressing and have small wins and you're accomplishing your goals, not only does that give you more confidence and you feel great and you feel like you're accomplishing something, but it conditions you to keep leading yourself because on that path, on that journey, of course, you're gonna have to do things that you don't wanna do. There's gonna be times when you have to get out of your comfort zone, whether that's you know starting your own business, gonna be really outside your comfort zone. You might have to make financial investments. You might have to put a lot of work in. Maybe you need to go back to school or ask your boss for a raise. Or maybe it's traveling, right? That's outside most people's comfort zone. You're going to strange places like here, Cuba, where everything is different. The language, the money, it's like no Wi-Fi anywhere. <laughs> it's like I'm stuck in the 50s. It's awesome, but at the same time, you know, for a lot of people that could be that could be scary. And as you're accomplishing your goals and getting closer and closer to your ultimate purpose, to achieving that ultimate purpose, you become more and more of a leader. You're conditioning yourself to take positive action. That's really what a leader does. He leads himself to positive action and he leads others to positive action. I'm inside a fort right now in Cuba. I don't know the name, but just like a good general or military leader, you gotta lead others to positive action. 
That means taking the lead, taking charge, making the plan for the night with your group of friends saying, hey, let's go here. Let's do this tonight. Maybe you're having dinner and you're the one who says, all right, let's go. Let's get the check. Let's go somewhere else. Get used to using command words like I just did, for example, let's go. Let's do this. I like the word let's because it involves everybody. It's not just saying, we're gonna go do this. I'm the boss, I'm taking charge. And at the same note, if people don't wanna do it, what you suggest, be flexible, let somebody else lead. A good leader knows when to take a step back and let others lead as well. A good leader makes decisions quickly and he's slow to change his mind. Most guys I've worked with, I notice are the exact opposite. They take a long time to decide what they're gonna do and then they second guess themselves afterwards and they change their mind quickly. So get in the habit of doing the opposite as all good leaders have that ability to be decisive. And one way to do that, super simple, is anytime you're at a restaurant, open up the menu and make your decision of what you're gonna eat within 30 seconds and don't second guess it. <laughs> Just eat whatever you ordered. If it's not good, you'll know better next time. We have this entire restaurant all to ourselves, including the Cuban yeah. band behind us. We're special. Yeah. Here's what I'm talking about. Lobster with garlic, Cuban style. We already ate the lobster cocktail. We got black beans and rice, salad, and delicious garlic bread. Mmm. <laughs> That is delicious. Now, if you don't have any friends, you have no one to lead, or even if you do, I recommend that you create a meetup group. Go to meetup.com. It doesn't cost a lot of money, and you're gonna be the organizer of the group, which means everybody's gonna be looking to you for guidance and direction and what to do. And you're gonna be the one planning everything. So it's gonna be up to you to make all the decisions, at least in the beginning, and figure out where, when, and what everybody is gonna do, which is gonna help you to be a better leader. It's gonna help cultivate that quality inside you. And the final category of leadership that we're gonna talk about is leading your woman. The first step is usually gonna be approaching her, which is leading yourself. You see her walking or whatever situation, and you're gonna have to start walking towards her, lead yourself to positive action. It's the easiest step, is literally taking that first step. Create some momentum, walk towards her, open your mouth and say something. And don't worry, I have a free conversation cheat sheet that shows you exactly what to do and what to say in that situation, no matter what daytime or nighttime situation you're in, so you can get the conversation started in a really confident and attractive manner and lead it to a phone number and a first date in no time at all, within two or three minutes of meeting her. And that whole interaction with her, from the moment you approach her to getting her phone number, to texting her, setting up a date, going on the date, leading her through the date, and potentially back to your place or at some point into a relationship, it's all up to you. You are the man. You are the one leading and taking charge. And when you're leading her, it needs to sound like a command. It needs to sound like you're leading her. A lot of guys will say, hey, let's go over here. Or is it cool if I get your number? Or tell me something interesting about you. And it sounds supplicating, it sounds weak. It doesn't sound strong and masculine because the tonality is going up at the end of the sentences, like a question, like I'm not sure about myself. Instead, it needs to go down like a command. Like, hey, stop, tell me something interesting about you. Or let's go over here. Let's go to this other venue. I know a great place over here. And you also need to be assertive when you go for the kiss. Can't be like second guessing it and like, oh, is it okay if I kiss you right now? You need to expect that she likes you. And you know, if you're at the second or third venue, you're one or two hours into the date, then as long as the date is going well, she should reciprocate and kiss you back. And now we're back in the pink Oldsmobile, gonna head back to the city. Maybe I just have a dirty mind, but chances are you do too. I had a date one time where I didn't tell her where we're going. I told her it was a surprise, which is a great thing to do most of the time because who doesn't like a surprise? Well, she didn't because on the way there, she asked again, where are we going? I really want to know. And I told her that we're going to a salsa class. And she goes, oh no, I don't want to go there. I don't like classes. I don't like salsa. 
But she wasn't adamant about it. If she would have said like, oh, I had a bad experience salsa dancing, somebody broke my foot and you know, I'm traumatized, that'd be different. But she was just like, oh no, I don't want to go. So I said, don't worry, it's going to be fun because you're going to be with me. I'll take care of everything. Don't worry. So sometimes you need to know when to be flexible and change the plans. Other times you need to know when to be persistent and a little bit adamant about what you're gonna do. Tell her to trust you. And women love that. When you're the man who's taking charge, you have a plan, it makes her feel safe, which builds a deeper connection and makes her more attracted to you. Biggest cigar in the world. So to spark red hot attraction, man, from the moment you meet her and keep increasing that attraction as the interaction goes on, you need to not only lead yourself, which is so important, not only with women and dating, but having a successful life in general, but you need to lead others, whether it's your group of friends or in a group type dynamic, like a meetup group. And by the way, if she sees you as the leader of a group, that will cause her to view you as even higher status and to help you escalate the interaction from the moment you meet her and know how to carry the conversation so that you can show her that you're a leader and also create even more and more attraction, make sure to download our free conversation cheat sheet. If you don't already have it, grab it, man. It's absolutely free. There's a link to the right of the screen in just a second and at the bottom of this video. A yoda o nunca. It means now or never. It means jump on a call with us, man. Take action. This is your chance to put what you just learned into practice and be an action taker. Book a call with us right now where we'll assess your situation, figure out what's holding you back, and get you to your goals in the fastest, most efficient, and easiest way possible so that you can start dating the woman of your dreams in no time. So book that call, a free breakthrough session. There's a link down in the description. Do it, man. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. And if you got questions, I got answers, hit me up on Instagram. Follow me and send me a DM. I wanna chat with you and help you out. My name's Matt Artisan, coming at you from Havana, Cuba with the Attractive Man team, and I'll see you in the next video.